Welcome to Everything Co-op, bringing you information on how cooperatives can help improve your quality of life. This show is being sponsored by the National Co-op Bank, NCB. The NCB is dedicated to strengthening communities nationwide for the delivery of banking and financial services for the nation's cooperatives, their members, and other socially responsible organizations. For more information on the power of community ownership, visit ncb.coop. That's ncb.coop. Now stay tuned for your host, Vernon Oaks. Good morning, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks, and welcome to Everything Cooperative. This beautiful Thursday morning, the sun is up, I'm up, you're up, so everything is great. And we're talking about co-ops this morning. We have some sad news. Most uh, cooperators know that Ralph Page passed away. He, he died on June 28th. Ralph was a hero, a black man that supported black farmers, uh, economic growth and land retention. And we've just asked people to call in. We want to honor him today. There was a New York Times article about him uh, about six days ago, and the Washington Post has interviewed uh, Cornelius Blanding, who took over for Ralph as the executive director of the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, and they will be producing a story about him. It's a wonderful life. And Mr. John Hoseclaw is on the line right now. Good morning, John. Good morning, Mr. Oaks. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Mr. Oaks was my dad, by the way. I, this is Werner. <laughs> <laughs> I think every time I'm on the show, I say that first, and then you say that. So I, uh, it's good, good to talk to you again, Werner. <laughs> Always a pleasure, John. W- what was your experience with uh, Ralph Page? I tell you, uh, I was thinking yesterday, I, I was coming in from uh, out of town on business travel, and I landed and cut my phone on, and the first thing I got the work was, you know, that uh, Mr. Page had passed, and I came home, and I told my, my wife, Marcine, and the first thing she said is, I know that you're going to go. And, you know, uh, I, I don't have enough words to describe the time and, and whatnot I had with Mr. Page, but I just, uh, one one word continues to come uh, in my mind, and it's just tireless. I mean, he was just a tireless advocate for black farmers, tireless advocate for cooperatives, tireless advocate for advocating on their behalf, as well as, you know, to run an organization, you have to develop and, and, and raise funds as well. And so, you know, he was always doing one of those things every time I got a chance to talk with him. I re- remember meeting him for the first time in 2001, and I can honestly say this, and I told Mrs. Pace this last week at his home going you know, that, you know, he always treated me the same from the day that he met me until the day, regretfully, um, that he passed away. And, and I had a deep level of respect for that because he had an opportunity to watch me grow within the cooperative community and always was able to give me a, a tidbit or a nugget of knowledge of something he had shared or, or told some story about some experience. And so, you know, it enabled me to, to learn from a cooperative Hall of Famer as well as a young professional who um, would, would grow into an older professional as I am now, but but also somebody who considers himself to be uh, an advocate as well for uh, for cooperatives nationwide. But you know, Mr. Page, you know, he just was always in motion. I remember having these meetings on Capitol Hill with Mr. Page and running around from room to room in the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture and having these great meetings. And uh, Vernon, I, I don't think one of those meetings was ever scheduled. <laughs> it was always just dropping in and is the is the secretary of agriculture chief of staff in and well no he's not well i'll just wait for for him right here and we would sit there in the secretary's office waiting for him and he or she would come and we'd have our conversation and we'd go down the hall to somebody else's office and we'd pop our heads in and so i think what that shows besides that tireless nature is also the level of respect um, that he was given from the community and, and from others. I would probably say he had earned. But what do you do now, John, just so the audience out there will know? Oh, just uh, so folks will know, I, I, I do work for the, the National Cooperative Bank, and my official title is uh, Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs. And, and I always kind of say to folks it's really a, a hybrid position to some degree because I get an opportunity to try to work and develop business uh, in the CDFI or community development fi- financial institution world. Um, also get a chance to reach out to folks in the philanthropic world and foundations. And then last but not least, uh, still do a few things on Capitol Hill from a government relations standpoint, but not as much. And so, 
kind of a jack of all trade with the end of the day, end of the day constantly and continually working to advance the development of cooperatives and and community development as it relates to our mission lending so that's that's my day job so I just want to echo what you said about Mr. Page because I had the same experience when I went to him about this radio program it was like open arms come here boy let me give you a big hug I I like that idea Uh, yeah it was it was that kind of personality it was all upbeat all support and every time I talked to him and the last time I talked to him was at the dinner for the Hall of Fame this year and he said he looked up at me from his wheelchair and said look I'm gonna be on the show again I said all right and I'm just sorry I didn't get him back on before his passing, because we never expect that to happen, because he had so much energy. Oh, it was all, he did. He always did. full of go, always full of go, blown up. Okay. And, and, and Vernon, that makes so many touch points with me, because, you know, really the last two or three years when he would come to town, um, that's when I really got a chance to spend the majority of the time with him and with Mrs. Page as well. And I remember him being on every Everything Co-op, and I accompanied him there and listening to him talk and you talk as well. You know, and I, 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 it was like listening to a history book or a historian going back and telling stories, um, all that came from the, you know, his mind and from his heart. And the last time that I saw him also was at doing co-op week this year and got a chance to take Mrs. Page and he out to lunch um, before the annual meeting. And it was just, it was just a, uh, as usual, uh, laughing, telling stories. And it wasn't just myself laughing and them, it was the servers and the people <laughs> busting the tables and anybody that was in earshot of Mr. Page could just hear us and, and would and he'd find some way to pull them into it as well. And you know, and another comment that I'd like to make is that he was always trying to find things for me to do uh to advance uh continue to advance uh things in the cooperative world and, and, and the last time that I actually talked to him uh, not saw him but talked to him was on the phone following the um co op week in, in May of this year. And he said, you know, remember, I still want to get you and some other folks out and making some rounds to some historical black colleges and universities and talking about cooperatives. And, you know, we're going, we're going to find a way to get the word out. And I, I would say to him, you know, Mr. Page, I, I, I do have a day job. So I don't know <laughs> if I'll be able to make these rounds to these HBCUs. But, you know, I mean, but there again, it was he was always trying to find some way. I mean, I was, you know, there's so many uh, cooperative principles that, he lived and, and earned and, and was a, a clear example of, but just the whole piece around education and, you know, economic participation, because in the end, that's what a lot of the black farmers um, that he worked with were lacking and then concern for community. And so, you know, it was, it was, it was a constant thing uh, for the, the more than 40 years that he was at the Federation and what he was able to do. And, um, again, it's, it, you know, I, I, I thought about this the other day. He won't be missed uh, in the Southeast or in the Federation. He'll be missed internationally. You know, someone with his status and someone who had, had, had been such a sto- steward of, 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 of goodwill and faith in the cooperative community and just a shining example of that. And so uh, this year's Federation dinner, um, while I'm sure it's going to be an opportunity to celebrate the work of the the Federation is probably also going to be a little bittersweet and sad just because um, Mr. Page's presence or his um, he's no longer are with us. So, Well, I talked to uh, Cornelius this morning. He, he asked me to call him. I talked to him, and he said that I could could say on the program that they are going to honor him. They're going to celebrate his life. So, yeah, I think it will be bittersweet, but in a tone of celebration. Yeah, um, I, mean, I really do hope Mrs. Page is there. And, I mean, besides being – what he was in the cooperative world. He obviously was a, a proud husband and father and grandfather and always talked about spoiling his grandkids. And um, at that last lunch that we had, he, he talked to me, he talked to me about when he met Mrs. Page and it was a sweet story and, and whatnot. And uh, I think she obviously wanted him <laughs> not to tell the story, but he did, but it, it's, it's so many fat to a, a, a man like that and, and the contribution that he gives, you know, uh, it's just only something that I hope to, Emulate. You know, my my wife works in health and human services as an education advocate, and she comes home on a regular basis and tells me about the things going on at her job and her coworkers, Fanny and Michelle and others. And you know, I want to listen, but it, it also feels good to know that if I'm an advocate for what I feel for, she's an advocate as well. And so, if Mr. Page were to get a lifetime achievement award like that, it can almost be a co lifetime achievement award because 
I'm sure there were many nights that he was away from home and traveled and was not there. And Miss Mrs. Page had to hold the house down and raise the children. So um, kudos to her as well. And she will always be a, a Hall of Famer in my my book as well as um, as a, a co recipient of that Lifetime Achievement Award for Mr. Page. I think we should tell that to Cornelius because every time, not every time I saw him, but most of the time that I saw him, she was by his side. For all the dinners and luncheons and so forth. Now she didn't. She wasn't here when he was on the on the um, radio show when he came to the studio. But you know, the first time he was on the program, and it was the first year that we were on. That's almost five years ago now, John, that we've been on the show. That first year, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving mm-hmm. Day, he took time at ten thirty at his home and called in. And I know his wife had to agree to this. Okay, on on Thanksgiving Day, he called in, and we had a wonderful conversation. Now, when he came to the studio, when you were kind enough to bring him in, uh, he that was the second time he was on, and I was looking forward to the third time because he has many stories to tell over 40. He was 49 years, I understand, he was at the Uh Federation. I think 30 years as the executive director. He was. So he he has lots and lots of stories to tell. And just to be clear, when you said that, we, we did come together. But Mrs. Page was back at the hotel. Okay. <laughs> she, wasn't, she wasn't too far away. I just okay. I said to her, look, you know, just enjoy the quiet time. He and I could, can go up and, and do this. And, and then I think after that, we went to USDA and made some rounds. But, again, she, she was there. She just necessarily didn't accompany us to that um, radio show on that day. But, again, um, definitely, you know, my heartfelt condolences go out to her and the family and, and just the rest of the international cooperative world, um, just at the passing of a, a like as you said, an opening a giant, a giant in the cooperative world, and just to be able to get on and say a few words today, as well as get a chance to uh, represent the bank at his service last week, was was truly an honor. Our board chair Martin Lowry was there as well, representing Electric Co-op, so it was just truly an honor to get a chance to say a few things about what he meant to to me and and I was a little selfish there at the end of uh, Bernie and I talked personally after giving the uh, condolences um from the bank but I just wanted to kind of let uh, them know and let Mrs. Page know what he meant to me personally I got it I would have been there I was in Detroit I had my first show on the road I was in Detroit I heard about that Thursday. congratulations yeah, that I heard was, about that that was great and I plan to be at their annual meeting on the on August and do some live shows there too John, hopefully, if you can, you'll be sitting beside me. <laughs> okay, if you can, can you stand a little bit longer? And um, and I'll, we will have to take our first break, and I'll be right back. Can I'll you be happy to. to. Okay, we'll be right back. Please don't touch that dial. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, WOL, and 95.9 FM. Formation is power, and this is why the National Co-op Bank sponsors this program, and WOL is a great partner, knowing that if you get the information, but you got to use it, you got to put it into action, either locating cooperatives to work with or starting your own. And if Ralph Page was still here, he would help you because he helped form so many co-ops, whether they were credit unions, or purchasing co-ops where farmers come together and buy their products and service, or marketing co-ops where the farmers would come together and and send their products that they had produced to different markets. Um, and it could be a worker cooperative, where any co-op that you can think of could be a worker co-op if the employees own and control the business. So Ralph Page did that. And the reason, John, I wanted you to hang on a little bit longer yeah. is Ralph talked in um, in 2010, he did a column and I'm reading this from the New York Times column that was, but they, they did a nice piece on him uh, about six oh, days ago. Piece. And they said that uh, Ralph Page stated that when President Abraham Lincoln created the United States Department of Agriculture in 1862, I didn't know it was that old, uh, he said that the problem was that 
the services of the Department of Agriculture was not available to all of the people. And that's why they they had a class action suit that was won and they started in 1997. Mm -hmm. And the settlement was uh, a little more than $2 billion for more than 15,000 claimants. So that black farmers had lost their their business, they had gone into bankruptcy and different economic hardship because the Department of Agriculture was not there for black farmers like they were there for white farmers, and they were able to prove that. And Ralph was the one that spearheaded that that sort of that movement. Um, did how often did he talk to you about that, and what was your view on what he did? With, well, with that? Um, you know, I'm I'm from the the great state of North Carolina, and, and here they always say that um, you know they they don't make more land or they don't create more land, and so the owning of land um, for many farmers obviously is uh, a paramount to their success, and so. The most uh, times that uh, Mr. Page would talk about that usually was before and after or even during some of our USDA meetings or Department of Agriculture meetings. The Department of Agriculture is an interesting department from a standpoint of it's one of the largest um, in the federal government, but probably one of the least talked about and very important. Um, but, but, but with that, um, you know, the, the, the plight of the black farmer over many years has been um, – hard from the standpoint of them being able to secure loans, them being able to get lines of credit or any kind of uh, financial assistance at all. And so what the Federation did was more or less stand in the gap um, to allow, uh, in many cases where a farmer or black farmer may have uh, been about to lose his land or something like that, they would come in due to unpaid taxes. They would come in and try to talk to either the county tax office or others to give them a little bit of an extension to help. Um, and I think what was so important in the in the case that you were talking about, the law a lawsuit was Pigford versus Glickman. What was so important were uh, the, the legal services and 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 what the federation staff were able to do to help these farmers who probably didn't understand a lot of the paperwork and legal pieces of these. Um, 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 things that were going on, and the Federation came in to provide them with that assistance. And so he would always Cornel tell me... Excuse me, uh, Cornelius uh, said that um, the Federation used a lot of their resources, their their money and their people to train the farmers on, on all of that. Uh, so the, no, the farmers did not understand, and if it wasn't for the Federation and for Ralph Page in particular, they would have mm -hmm. never gotten that lawsuit filed or won. Because they didn't right, understand. Right. You're right. You're right. So, again, I mean, again, farmers are sometimes, in it, really in any business, you can be great at business, um, but not necessarily great at uh, the financial aspect of it or have that background from a financial services standpoint. I think, again, that um, the amount of resources um, were invaluable to those farmers from the from the, the federation. But I just, you know, most of the time it was during the USDA meetings. And I didn't even realize that they were integral in so many parts of our different programs in USDA until I would go walking around with Mr. Page and visiting the various um, segments or departments or agencies within USDA that the Federation had an impact on. And, you know, and Cornelius is a great um, um, leader, and, and, and Ralph, Mr. Page was a, such a mentor and father figure to him um, that the, the – the work and the advocacy continues with someone who can definitely feel um, his um, shoes. And I, I would be remiss, I was just thinking about this a minute ago, if I didn't also talk about the special relationship that um, our president and CEO, Chuck Snyder, had with um, Mr. Page as well. Because on a lot of those visits where I was on Capitol Hill with Mr. Page, um, you know, Chuck was there also. And they really shared a special relationship and bond. Um, um, again, both co-op Hall of Famers, uh, and whatnot, and then you know, there's also uh, uh, um, uh, an award that uh, Mr. Page and you both share, the the Dreyer Award that we give out every year. And so again, it's I, I'm still I'm still I, I'm still not even believing it. I'm still walking on cloud ten. Uh, and, and I got <laughs> Chuck did a, and I didn't understand this when Ralph got it. I was in the meeting when Ralph got this um, Spirit of Cooperative Award. Mm -hmm. That. I, that Ralph did not know he was going to get it. And I definitely did not know I was going to get it. And I'm still <laughs> reeling. That's what, that's how many months ago was that? Three, four months. I'm still. Uh, yeah. Three, four months ago in May. Yeah. Yeah. And I was so happy. Um, um, but trust me, a lot of us didn't know it as well. So to see your, uh, 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 impact it had on you and, 
than us as well, you know, um, just for your rich history in the last five years of, of doing everything co-op, trying to get the word out. I mean, again, think about the company that um, you, you're keeping and think about the great work the, of individuals that um, are doing to get the cooperative message out. But um, again, it's, 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 it's one of those things where I, I think it is home going. It was a great job of, celebrating his life and not mourning it um, to some degree because I, that's what Mr. Page would want. He would want us to keep going and keep fighting and keep doing the things that we need to do to keep the movement going. He wouldn't want us to hold our heads down and be sad. I mean, he, he'd understand us being sad for a little while, but, um, you know, I, I, what I said during my remarks is that he can he can rest now. It's our turn to, to pick up this mantle and, and, and fight the good fight and keep this thing going. Yeah, I want to change it a little bit in that he was only 74. And I say that because I'll be turning 71 this year. He was mm -hmm. only 74 years old. And it was from, I assume it said heart failure was the reason, but I understand he also had diabetes. And the reason that's he did. important to he me did. is because I'm already, I've always, also have been diagnosed with, I, I call it high glucose. I'm not claiming mm -hmm. diabetes because I'm fighting to change it around. I got you. But it's like there's so many people, but particularly black people with diabetes and high blood pressure that we really have to get on it. I don't know how much he did to to change his way of life, his eating and his exercise and perhaps weight. I don't know how much he did once he found out. But my brother died from the complications of diabetes. He was only 64. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we just really, as a people, have got to get on top of this. And it's what's difficult. I mean, I I got all of the knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. I, I've studied it, but mm -hmm. doing it. I mean, consistently. You know, when you at somewhere and they have this nice pound cake, it is hard, difficult. And so far, I have not won that fight that many times where I don't want to go eat. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny you say that because the last time we had our lunch, uh, Mr. Page had a, a battle with a, a piece of key lime pie hey. at the restaurant we were at. And so uh, I don't Who, who I, I, won? I, uh, I think the key lime pie <laughs> okay. won. But, but, but to his credit, uh, I think he and Mrs. Page agreed to take it back to the hotel and split it instead of eating it there. But, but, but so true. It, it was. Uh, I, I didn't mention this, but it was so fitting that the day of the home going um, uh, actually was my my uh, father's 80th birthday, and oh. he passed away eight years ago. And so, you know, I, I tried to think about both men uh, who are giants and titans in my world and, and whatnot. But it was his 80th uh, birthday, and he he didn't pass away from 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 uh, uh, diabetes or high blood. But but again. Um, it was just, uh, you know, to be in the same day. But, but you are right, Vernon. It's 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 a it's a problem in the African American community. Um, and I I can't speak for Mr. Page, but I know as somebody who does a lot of business travel, you know, when you're walking from airport to airport and you you know you you want to grab something to eat, and a lot of times there aren't many healthy options, right, and whatnot. And so I I try to do my best either find something um, healthy or, or not eat at all or grab a smoothie or something like that. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. And, 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 and you, you look at folks that have uh, di uh, diabetes or high glucose uh, uh, and, and, and uh, high blood pressure. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a double whammy. And, and I don't, I don't, you know, I, you almost feel like you wish there were more public service announcements about it or more, um, education around it, and we try to do a better job of the way we eat and exercise and and take care of ourselves. It's a it's something that can't be prevented if if if, if proper education occurs. So, um, and I and I actually didn't know that in regards to you. So, you know, you're you're about as as, as active as anybody I know. But um, again, uh, and educated on that, on that as well. So, it continues to be a struggle in our community. It does. Yeah, and I it seems like it. Uh, you could probably get all from this is me speaking from it because I have and I've been dealing with it now for about 12 years. And you could probably have all of the messages online about it. And you could, but for me, it is having groups of people that will work together so that when I, it's almost like maybe it's like um, Alcoholic Anonymous. Mm -hmm. That you, you have a sponsor and a group and you go to meetings and, 
And every time that the, this, this, and, I, and I'm talking on cake because I failed the last two times I confronted pound cake, okay? <laughs> the pound cake won. Pound uh, cake won. And, um, it, it, and, and there's no sort of like you can not just eat one bite. I try that, but that doesn't work either. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So it is having a group of people is what I've found, and maybe this, this cooperative model of getting people working together, getting people – uh, there's a clinic in Madison, Wisconsin that's a, um, a consumer clinic. It's owned by the patients. And perhaps if we could get patients working together, um, my, my focus is on black folk, but I'm really interested mm-hmm. in all people. But it's like, how do we get people and how do I get support? I'm talking about Vernon Oaks right now. How do I get mm-hmm. support such that when I'm facing the the cake, the key lime pie, man. I mean, I had a piece of key lime pie in Fort Myers, Florida once, and it, I don't know if they put that one in front of me. I'm going to at least take a bite and try to run from the rest of it. But, <laughs> you know, so how do you, how do we do that? And, and, and it, 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 what I have also learned, it isn't, they say you can have some, but you have to have small portions. Mm-hmm. You, can, mm-hmm. you can have it and get the taste, but see, that's where, once I take a bite, it's back. I'll take a small portion, but I take it five times. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, okay. so you have five small portions. <laughs> yeah, right. Five right. small portions. Um, so, so that's you know, a big. I, I agree. And yeah. uh, the other thing is, at seventy four, he passed at seventy four, right before his seventy fifth birthday. I think on July the twenty eighth, he would have turned seventy five. Ralph Page would have turned seventy five. That it still he beat the odds for the life expectancy for African-American men. I, I, please hang on. We'll finish this up if you can, John. We'll be right back. We have to take our second right. break. Okay, thank you. that he was with the Federation for 49 years. I think that's what I said earlier. It was 46 years. He joined in 1969. And before that, he was a coach and got a uh, his undergrad degree in physical education. So I was run- wondering, um, John, uh, if, if he just took those skills of being a coach and, and learning how to put people together and get folks working together and the the federation i think he said that he started some i don't know was that 20 did he start 20 different um credit unions all kinds of different uh cooperative businesses that represented um 20,000 families wow yeah so if you let's think if I, i'm always trying to just sort of say can i can i support one family uh, he said dozens of cooperatives and 18 community development credit unions. So he, mm-hmm. uh, 20, 75 cooperatives b- belong to the Federation. So that's 75 different businesses, are, and that's made up of some 20,000 families. So him putting his coaching, his getting folks working together as teams, which is a cooperative principle. It seems like it fits from a coach to a cooperator. It, fits it does. Really it well. does. I mean, I mean, if you, if you look at, I mean, those are incredible numbers, but you know, you know, it was, it was throughout the entire Southeast, you know, it wasn't just Georgia where he was born and where the office was located. It was Mississippi, Alabama, um, other places. Uh, 13 but, states, but I think, understand. 13 oh yeah. States? Incredible. Um, but if you think about it and you ask people who play sports or, or whatnot, and you ask them who are some of the influential people in their life, and you know somebody will say a coach. You know, I, I had a I played football in elementary school and had a coach, Buddy Rogers, who probably had more impact on me as a 
a young person. This, I mean, that was 40 years ago, uh, 30 plus years ago um, as a coach. And so, you know, it, 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 it fit Mr. Page as someone uh, who was a coach, uh, who was a leader. Coaches are mentors. Coaches draft up plans, uh, plays. And so, again, um, if you think about it, during his time there, uh, Mr. Page was that coach. And he did all those things, and he led by example. And he came up with the strategies and came up with the game plan, so to say, to implement um, a lot of programs, or the, the start of a lot of programs that you know would become the foundation of the organization, but also, um, you know, throughout a, a large geographic area. So that's a great analogy. I, I you know, after reading that New York Times piece, that, that that didn't cross my mind, but you're exactly right. I mean, he, he definitely fit that role um, adequately uh, uh, as, as a coach and mentor and leader and playmaker for sure. I'm uh, glad you went there because my high school coach was uh, one of the mentors in my life and real, his, his name was Merle Gaynor. He was a for a long time the winningest high school football coach in the U.S. But I spoke at a dedication to him, and I started uh, this quote and asked people to finish it. The first one was, a quitter never wins. Uh, that's what he was to tell us. And he said, mm-hmm. and a winner never quits. And that's what the audience would mm-hmm. repeat back. And right. the second quote. Now, he, I've actually heard you, heard you talk about him in our private conversation. So it, he definitely was a huge impact on you. Yeah, absolutely. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. <laughs> it's like there's no time <laughs> to quit. When it gets tough, you just buckle down and go and he took I didn't realize I was 154 pounds my senior year playing guard and middle linebacker and I would be up 250 <laughs> pound or tackles and stuff it, it never fazed me that I was so small was just get in there and hit it boy um so yeah uh coaches are there and and that's what he, and I hadn't thought about I didn't know his background until I read this in, in the article that that's what he that was the spirit that you got from him of let's all get together and do this, whatever this was. And it was building co-ops and building people and helping uh, particularly black farmers, but folks in the South get economic uh, dependency that they could have their Because in this article, it said that the the fate of a black farmer, financial insecurity, uh, insecurity was the norm or is the norm even. Um, so how do you get this the folk for folks have financial security? That's, that's social security, political security. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, and 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 make no mistake. I mean, a lot of that, a lot of that still exists today. You know, I've been with uh, Cornelius before, and um, he's received calls um, from some member of the federation who's, um, as, like I said before, a little behind on their property taxes, and uh, you know, the county or is threatened, or the city is uh, threatened to put a lien against the farm. And I've I've watched him. Um, go into action and make a few calls and, and, and figure out what contacts the Federation had on the ground there to reach out to the county to to buy a little bit more time. Um, and so, again, uh, the, the, the plight of the black farmer is, is also, you know, one of uh, financial and economic insecurity today. It's not – it hasn't gone away. I mean, there's a reason why Mr. Page was at the Federation for 46 years because the, the battle was ongoing. And uh, it continues today. So, um, you know, it's not like it's going anywhere. Um, and so the Federation is needed more now today than any other. Um, I mean, you you know, the things that your coach imp- impressed upon you, I mean, in, in a lot of t- in times in the, in the world we live in today, we should get T-shirts made up and, uh, and, and, and passed around for folks to feel that way. Um, because I think today a lot of times people don't feel that way about the, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough keep going, that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that's, um, yeah, that it, it is hard to get that ingrained in, in me and keep it there because when stuff gets, you know, you just want to lay down and quit. Or you, I, ain't, I ain't think about it every now and then. And then it's like, oh, no, no, no. I started to say what my dear said, oh, hell to the no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You won't, you, you know, you won't, you won't let yourself quit. And so, again, it's, I, I keep coming back to that word, Vernon, tireless. And it just, you can put whatever uh, uh, you want behind that word, but um, Mr. Page was just tireless in all the things that he'd done um, and, and did. 
in this arena. Um, and, you know, he just um, was, uh, took all of that into his last battle. Uh, and, and when he went into the hosp- hospital, uh, it was his time. And um, it, it was uh, the one battle that he couldn't win. But, um, again, it doesn't mean that we can't celebrate and or continue um and, and ourselves trying to have that own tireless nature as it relates to the promotion and, and development and expansion of cooperatives across the country, uh, if not the world. And in the development of the cooperatives across the country and the world is um, really helping people to get this economic stability, this, this, this sense that, you know, I won't go to bed. Somebody that was talking about folks in Africa said that that there was an African farmer that said before they got into the co-op, they would they would have more year than they had food. Okay, wow. that, that food would run out be, uh, before the year was up. And once wow. they got into the co-op, they would have more money than year <laughs> that they had right. savings. Okay, and 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 to make that change that you know that your kids can eat. When, you know, like, and for us up here would be wintertime. You can't right. produce it, so you've got to be able to make sure that they can eat, and that's where the savings and economics sort of, and then you have the social and, and joining co-ops. You get the economic stability, and we're talking about farmers, but I've been on this program, John. Uh, I had some artists coming together creating uh, purchasing co-ops and marketing co-ops. And one of the things, one of the art, uh, cooperatives said that musical artists said that musicians, they were trying to get it to where, you know, musicians will have good months and bad months, good mo- in terms of money. Right. And they were trying to find a way, they were looking at ways of putting money, pooling money, so that they could they could straighten that line out. So that, you know, this musician may have money in January, but nothing in February, but another musician had money in February, but didn't have it in January. And they can pool their money so that they they could have money and didn't have that security, the financial security that could put it in place by working together. I thought that was phenomenal, and I want to go back and see how that's working. But that's the same, that's what co-ops can do. And I, that's why I've gotten to love co-ops, that we can really help each other. And also getting this knowledge, that's the fifth principle, education, knowledge, and information. The farmers had to get it in order to do the, the to go against a, the largest department in the U.S. government, the Department of Agriculture. And it's really sad that a department and the federal government would discriminate. But I think we know as black folk that that has happened, <laughs> whether it's education or agriculture or whatever else it might be, that the departments reflect the culture. Huh. Yeah, it all it all it all rolls downhill a, a lot of times. But um, you're right, and there again, the the, the plight is, is is not over. And, and you look across the spectrum, be it, it, it uh, black farmers, be it uh, limited equity co-ops, and in, in, a, in a in a community in New York City where housing, um, with, housing. I, I, yeah, housing cooperatives. Um, um, where without that cooperative, I have mean, a friend who lives in D.C. who has a two-bedroom. Um, it lives in a cooperative community, and there's nowhere in the world that she could afford that um, if it were not for the, the her 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 cooperative. You look at you know uh, um, Renaissance Community Co-op in Greensboro, which I talk about often, and how there was no grocery store there in this African American community, and now it is. And so there's so many examples. And I've I've talked about this before, and if someone wants to go to our website, they can see it. But we put out a list every year of the top 100 cooperatives in the in the in the, in the country, and you know somebody it never fails. I always meet somebody who will say, "Oh, I didn't know that Ocean Spray was a cooperative." You know, we drank a lot of cranberry juice, or I didn't know that Land Lakes was a cooperative. Uh, we loved their products and that kind of thing. And so you you, you hit you hit the nail right on the head, Vernon. Is that in the end, it all starts with education and we have to find a way to um, uh, get the word out. And, and obviously, you know, NCB um, loves this program and supports it. And, and it's one, one avenue. The National Cooperative Business Association does their best to educate folks about the cooperative business. And they also have a really strong international program as well that works with a lot of those uh, farmers in Africa and other countries. 
you know, and, and last but not least, I mean, just uh, international uh, co-op folks who are trying to get the word out, the cooperatives now. There's so many organizations, and we all work together to try to educate folks about how co-ops and cooperatives can make um, their lives better. Um, again, it's just a it's a constant um, um, thing that we just have to continue doing um, because, like you said, just like with the diabetes and the high blood pressure, um, you can educate folks all they you want to, but until they have, you know, actually see it, uh, it may not impact them as much. So I've asked you to stay on. I'm going to ask you again if you got the time because Cornelius <laughs> was going to call in, but he's in Alabama in the woods. He said he didn't know if he's going to be able to get a, uh, even get sell. So it looks like he hasn't been able to, yeah. to, to do yeah. it. Um, but we're going to take our final break here and we'll be right, right back to talk about Ralph Page. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM, W.O. at 95.9 FM. Information is power. And listen, this is Everything Cooperative. My name is Vernon Oaks. Um, we've we talked about the National Co-op Bank that sponsors this program, and NCB's mission is to support and be an advocate for America's cooperatives and their members, especially in low-income communities by providing innovative financial and related services, and they do a wonderful job of that. Uh, Roberta McDonald uh, called Chuck Snyder. She's the, she works for Cabot Creamery, which is another cooperative. She called uh, the folks at NCB angels. <laughs> you know you're angels, John? I, I did not know that. I yeah. did not know that, Vernon. But th- those are very kind words. They really are. Well, when you talked about Chuck being uh, such had such a great relationship with with Ralph, uh, and what what I've noticed with Chuck and Murray Alice and RL and you and I've just going on and on and on with the people I met at NCB, it's sort of a, a folks really liking what they do and doing it and supporting people and this whole sort of mission of helping people, particularly low income communities. And seeing how you can get that done with what you were talking about, whether that's a food co-op in a in a food desert place, or uh, low income housing cooperative, or affordable housing co-op, or any kind of any for artist cooperative, helping people really blossom. Uh, yeah, you're you're doing you're doing God's work. Keep it up, man. Keep that's very that's very kind, Bernie. And again, I I do think you you mentioned some of our, our my colleagues there as well as our president CEO, who's my boss. Um, you know, again, it's listen. We're any job in some places you can it can be like a family, and with that family, sometimes you cannot always agree, and sometimes you can agree and all sit down at the table and have a conversation. But I think at the end of the day, for prim- serve uh, and benefit um, uh, from a financial services standpoint, uh, the cooperatives, uh, as well as uh, the mission living piece where, where primarily majority or all of my work is done in collaboration with uh, specialty finance folks there at the job. So again, it's, it, you know, uh, I think that's the one common strand about us as an organization. We all believe in what we do. And it's another key part of it is that um, I think that uh, the bank believes in us and mm-hmm. it's amazing how, uh, you work somewhere sometimes, and you feel like you lose that that uh, that belief. And, and I think that you know uh, NCB and our leadership, led by Mount Martin Lowry, as well as others on our board and senior leadership at work, they, they all believe in us and they believe in the work that we do. So that's important. That's important to me as a as a as a professional. Fantastic. And we've got Steve on the line. Steve, do you have a question or comment? Steve, you have a question or comment? Maybe we've lost Steve. I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, I can. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was just calling uh, to, um, you know, recall Ralph and, and really, you know, his work um, with the Federation. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I knew him for... I guess I first met him when I was working for NASCO, North American Students for Cooperation. You know, that would have been like 17, 18 years ago. Um, and and he really played a huge role in um, 
keeping uh, Southern cooperatives and, and cooperatives in the Black Belt in particular on, on the national radar screen, you know, at a time when um, I think it's really changed today and you're seeing a lot of uh, cooperative development in, in black communities across the United States. But there was, you know, there were some tough years there where, where that wasn't happening and, and he kept the Federation going. Um, and, um, you know, really served as a bridge between uh, the, the civil rights era and the current era. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, you know, sad to see him part, uh, but he, you know, is definitely a giant in the field and just wanted to honor that. Steve, thank you so much for calling in and for all of the work that NAFCO, NAFCO does and um, the the housing co-ops on university campuses around universities. And I've had folks on the program from NAFCO and talked about how students, knowing that they only be there four or five years, but make sure they have the savings so that the place will stay in existence. That was one of the things I took away is that how, how folks can be... Um, I guess not so selfish, and they are looking for future generations, and young people can do that. Yeah. So thank you for all of the yeah, work that you all do. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, and uh, look forward to talking to you more later. All, all right. right. Thanks for calling. All right. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Steve. I mean, again, it's all true, and again, I, there probably were five or six organizations that I left off that list, but again, there's so much great work going on in this arena and this movement, and I'm really, you know, I mean, I, I mean, Mr. Page's homecoming could have been eight hours. <laughs> okay. of folks that probably could have got up and said some words about him and the impact that he made. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it's hard to squeeze it into an hour and a half or a couple of hours, but um, uh, I appreciate Steve calling in and, and saying those kind words. And, and, and again, John, Brian, you, you know, well, you're, what, you're what, providing this. I, I got a Mrs. Miss Brown on. I want to get her on okay. before we lose Good time. Miss Brown, comment or question? Yes. Good morning. How good are morning. you? Good morning. Great. How are you? I am good. Um, I am an employee of the Federation, uh-huh. and I really just want to speak um, with Mr. Page regarding on a personal side. Uh-huh. You know, Mr. Page did a lot of great work for a lot of people, and he dedicated his life to it, but one of the greatest things about him is working for that organization. He made you want to to excel and want to help people. He took such an interest in his employees, even on a personal level. He was, you know, he was a, our boss. He was like our mentor. He was like a father figure. He let us know that he cared about us, and he was he was such a wonderful man. And even after he retired from the Federation, he still stayed in contact. Yes. with his employees. In fact, especially me, we still stayed in contact. He, he was like a father figure. And he was just, he was such a great man, and he will be truly, truly missed. What do you do there, Ms. Brown? I work in the Mississippi office. I'm the director of the Agriculture Mediation Program in the Mississippi office. How many offices do you have? We, um, the Federation, we have offices in Georgia, um, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Yeah, the whole mm-hmm. southern region. Okay. Yeah, and I'm out of the Mississippi office. Well, thank you so very much for calling in, um, giving a shout-out to your boss and your mentor and your father figure. <laughs> okay. This, thank you all. This is so great that you all did this tribute to him today. Yes, I, I we love him. He he was easy to love because he loved us. I mean, and I've only known him five or six years. You, how long have you known him? I started with the federation in two thousand nine. It's about nine years. Okay, and and John, you said how long did you know? Uh, two thousand one was the first time I met him. So, I guess so seventeen, 17 years. years. Seventeen years. Yeah, I, I, I mirrored the the previous caller in regards to the years, but again, he treating me the same the first day as he did uh, the last time that I got a chance to talk to him. Yeah, he, that that's just the type of person that he was. You know, if you were sick, he would call to check on you, make sure if, you know, make sure you were okay if anything bad had happened. He was just he was just a wonderful, wonderful man. He was an extraordinary you man. You made me think when you said retired, and, and I, in some regard, I don't think Mr. Page ever retired. He told me he was no. not going to retire. He told right. me that. He just he, he had that title, but I don't think he was retired because, like you <laughs> right. said, he would just That's... call me up some days, you know, and to check in. 
Yeah, the 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 saying is with Federation, you never actually retire. <laughs> yeah, you okay. never actually retire. He's still a part of it. We only have uh, another minute, minute and a half to go. So, what would you like to leave people, Miss Brown or John? Let's go, Miss Brown first. What would you like to leave people with? What comment or, about the Ralph and cooperatives? Um. I would say really do some research and look into him and look at all the work many ways. It doesn't have to be forming a cooperative. It doesn't have to be certain things. You can help in so many ways. And let's just take a lesson out of his book and try to help everyone that we can if you're able to in any capacity. So let's take a lesson out of his playbook. I'm sure he had a playbook as being a coach. John, what do you generally lead people with? Well, I would just, you know, look at that New York Times piece and, and just take uh, President, uh, President uh, Lincoln's uh, quote again. The problem is that his services have never been available to all people. And there are a lot of things in this country that aren't available to all people. Uh, and I think uh, the fight continues. And I think that um, we need to continue the fight uh, for people like uh, Mr. Ralph Page. So we can fight for the immigrants, we can fight for women's rights, we can fight for, there's so much that we can fight for today that that it seems like our government, at least uh, perhaps the head person in our government is against. So yeah, we, there's a lot of work that we can still do, and let's, let's look at Ralph Page's life and try to model it after him. Thank you guys very much. It's Thanks, been great. Brian. And everybody Thank out there... We'll see you next Thursday. Please have a cooperative, cooperative week. Washington, D.C.'s News Talk, 1450 AM.